Hi, here's some news. President Trump announced in a speech what seems like eight months ago that he's pulling out of the Paris Accord, making a real mess on the planet's inner thigh. Nope, too graphic. I mean, Earth is f***ed and covered in f Nope! President Trump wants to remove the United States from the Paris Accord, which is the agreement that 195 out of 197 countries signed to fight climate change. And despite being told by his business advisory board and his crush and corporations like Microsoft and even Exxon and most scientists, he instead took the advice of people like Steve Bannon, who clearly just wants more cloud cover so he can go outside during the day, and Scott Pruitt, current head of the EPA with ties to the fossil fuel industry. Here's what Trump said about leaving, which wouldn't take effect until the day after election day in 2020. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. Thank you, thank you. But begin negotiations to re-enter either the Paris Accord or a really entirely new transaction on terms that are fair to the United States. In other words, the United States is leaving the Paris Accord, but we might go back, but also we might just go to Taco Bell. Trump sounds like the most infuriating person to make plans with. It's like trying to meet up with your drunkest friend, but they just keep texting leaving soon for two hours straight. Also, this is a voluntary agreement where each country can set their own guidelines and goals. So leaving it is like getting a take-home test that you can self-grade and refusing to do it at all for a ridiculous reason like you think all the other students are laughing at you for taking the test just like they are. But that would be highly likely given the source. We don't want other leaders and other countries laughing at us anymore. And they won't be. They won't be. Because they'll be dead they'll be dead. Now, obviously I'm being hyperbolic, so let's say you don't even believe in climate change. Like, what if you make the common mistake of thinking that climate and weather are the same thing? Or maybe because we believed the universe revolved around the Earth 2,000 months years ago and now we don't, maybe that's a really good point. Or maybe you interpret the data a certain way because you work in or around fossil fuels. And maybe you have other reasons. Fine, perhaps the president is right and climate change is a hoax created by the Chinese so they can, cancel 100 coal plants, and then invest in cleaner, safer energy after signing the Paris Climate Agreement. Let's say that. If climate change isn't happening, things like coal plants are still inarguably terrible for our air and water, and are more expensive and less safe than things like solar panels and wind turbines. Just ask most scientists. Although, if you ask the president's vlog from seven years ago that he's since deleted, but someone still has somewhere, he hates wind turbines, which he calls windmills, and thinks they look ugly, and he doesn't want them near his golf course in Scotland, as evidenced by years of documented litigation between himself and Scotland. So, okay, Mr. President, instead of windmills, just do coal. Mordor Lago. Eh? Eh? Besides, coal jobs aren't disappearing because the government is in the pocket of big, clean energy. They're going away, according to our labor expert Morpheus, because of... MACHINES! Thank you, labor expert Morpheus, from the sequel to The Matrix, The Matrix 2, Matrices. Speaking of machines, very serious man and former FBI director James Comey testified in front of Congress about his interactions with very silly man, current president, Donald Trump, the f***ing president. The hearing revealed a lot, but like sweet jazz, let's listen to what he doesn't say. When asked if he can confirm any criminal allegations within the infamous Steele dossier, which alleges against our president and his associates many crimes, he had this to say. Mr. Chairman, I don't think that's a question I can answer in an open setting. skip it up, boo and so forth. Some eagle-eyed viewers might notice that the other possible answer was no. Other highlights include the former FBI director discrediting a story from the New York Times and other nonsense in the news, and implying that one of the reasons he took regular notes on his meetings with the president is because he thinks our president is a bit of a liar who lies a lot and would lie about them, even saying that he's seen the tweet about tapes and hopes there are tapes. He implicated former Attorney General Loretta Lynch's actions as a reason he released his letter about the Clinton email investigation, explained how our institutions are supposed to work, and overall just sort of described in detail events in which our president tried to use the FBI director's job to leverage personal loyalty, and then talked like a mob boss about hoping that the Flynn investigation gets dropped while ignoring how our independent institutions are supposed to function. And then he took away the FBI director's job for showing perceived personal disloyalty, which is not what is required of our functioning institutions. And and breaking news, nothing will come of any of this. Damn it.
Here's some news. There was a terror attack in London this past week, and the general consensus from the UK seems to be that the American media is sensationalizing it far too much because they're trash. So breaking news, thoughts and prayers, moving on. Meanwhile in the UK, Conservative Prime Minister Theresa May called a snap election to gain more seats, but instead lost many to the Labour Party. And it's possible that the next Prime Minister will be Labour's Jeremy Corbyn would have won. Here's some news. Bill Maher, a comedian known for having opinions that range from being obliviously racist to those that are outwardly and unquestionably racist, casually said the N-word on purpose while he was surrounded by cameras and wearing a microphone in a room that was filled with air. So the sound traveled. A few comedians have come to the millionaire's aid saying, Bill's a comedian and it's just a joke. Which brings us to another installment of, is this a joke? You're welcome. We'd love to have you work in the fields with us. <laughs> work in the fields? That's part of that. That's <laughs> I'm a house <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's literally not a joke. When asked to work in the fields of Nebraska, Bill very comfortably described himself as a house N-word with a soft R, so you know it's okay. But that's not a joke as much as it is a reminder that white people used to have different nuanced categories for non-human that they put black people in. So, what's the joke? Should Bill Maher be fired? Yeah, f it, sure, fire everybody. But even if he doesn't, can we stop talking about him? We wring our hands and dedicate a lot of media coverage every time a Bill Maher or a Milo Loren says something ridiculous and say, oh, this is how the left or the right think. Aren't they all bad? Instead, let's just ignore them as the irrelevant controversy courting trolls that they are. So in that spirit, here's more about Bill Maher. I'm a house so he said his stupid Bill Maher thing, and it sucked, and the audience laughed and clapped, which sucked even more, and Bill said thank you, which f*** you. But I want to focus on the reactions of his guest, Ben Sass, which sucked the most. <laughs> no, it's, it's a joke. To be fair, yes, Ben, a senator from Nebraska, was clearly visibly uncomfortable. You could see in his eyes that he didn't know what to do because he was the guest on a show and there were cameras on and a cheering audience. And the host of that show just casually and comfortably dropped the N-word and then thanked everyone for it. But he should know what to do. Ben Sass, you're a senator, a father. You just published a book about how parents in America need to do a better job training our children to be mature, responsible, and accountable adults. And an aging, out of touch liberal elite sat across from you and said of one of the last purely hate infused words in our global vocabulary, and you smiled? Instead of saying, top of the dome. No, everybody stop clapping. Bill, I know this is your show, and I'm a guest, but that word has a lot of history to it, and a lot of present hatred wrapped up in it, and you have no claim to use it, and you do real damage when you do, as evidenced by some alternate reality in which instead of saying this, I merely smiled. Your casual use of that word on your global platform sends a message that hate speak is okay, and that is not a reflection of the America that I, a senator, represent. Apologize right now. Something like that. Hey Ben, actually, hey, White people, we need to be better about this. The current symbol for white pride in America is a dapper Nazi. Wouldn't it be better if the symbol for white pride in America was someone who loudly and proudly told Bill Maher to shut the f up? There's so much more pride in being part of an engine that stands up to hate than there is being part of one that stands on the side while hate barrels through. We see it in the weekly footage of some white asshole publicly shouting ugly, hateful things at people of color. The worst part of these videos is Everything, all of it. But there are always people who just watch. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but we need to be able to speak up for people in these situations. And yes, the only example that comes to mind is when two people died in Portland for doing exactly that. But that's terrorism, making people afraid to speak up. And as cheesy as it sounds, provolone. And as corny as it sounds, maze. But as cliche as it sounds, not speaking up against hate is letting the terrorists win. Speaking of speaking up, calls to Congress have reportedly gone back down to pre-Trump numbers. In the past, the high number of phone calls has actually influenced members on important issues, so take that, money. But recently, those calls have subsided, and during Comey's testimony, Congress rolled back some of Dodd-Frank, which was meant to rein in financial institutions and prevent another recession. So here's the number for the congressional switchboard. Call your rep today. It doesn't have to be about that. Tell them to build the wall, or repeal the Affordable Care Act, or save the Affordable Care Act, or renegotiate the Geneva Conventions, or see the president's taxes. It can be whatever's in your heart. Stand up. Speak out. Shout it loud. Bernie would have won.
everybody, thanks for watching some news. If you want to subscribe to our channel, click the C in the middle. If you want more videos, click one of the two boxes on the right. We're actually going to reschedule this, and it's going to come out every Saturday from now on instead of Sunday. So know that, and hit the notification bell so you can get notifications. All right.